day everyone how are you guys doing this friday afternoon i'm gonna flip on over here to our charts whoops i better open our trade station too so we can look at those one moment here you're going to make me and bring me coffee every day. Woohoo! I will introduce you to the best farmer's markets and locally brewed co or locally ground and um, roasted coffee beans. Actually, we grind them here, but yeah. I'm going to pull this up here, give that just a second, but we'll start here with looking at what's going on on the NASDAQ. I'm gonna go through the indices first. So if there's something you guys want me to take a look at today, go ahead and post that in the chat room and we will go ahead and take a look. So it could be stocks, it could be any sort of futures, whatever you might be following right now. All right, here is our nasdaq we've had some pretty smooth moves in the market so far today i got in right around the open just a little bit uh, after the open but we've had a really crazy rally in oil going into around 11 30 or so i'm going to show you guys that here in just a couple of minutes um, let's see, question, I got my wave count wrong on the NQ at the open. Can you go over that? Yes, we can definitely take a look at that here. Um, you'll notice actually the wave count going into the open here is very similar as what we saw just happening on the ES. I'm gonna just show you guys this here really fast and then we'll go look at the bigger picture. So what often happens is when we get this really strong kind of move and then it goes into congestion and then you get a breakout but the second leg might be a little bit stronger than the first what do you guys know about wave count right that means that we might get a third move but it could be stunted this case you know it's close to about the same as the first move but you don't really know that for sure the hard thing about this is that sometimes it's a nice 2t and it will allow it to turn over and you'll get a really clear reversal other times it's more like this and what happens is it just pivots and it kind of starts out slowly and then gives you the bigger move so if we look at the let's see what time frame do i got here on the es the 2000 tick chart we've been studying um, wave count here in league of traders this week so if we pull up, well, I've got a 3000 tick chart here, but you can see kind of the same thing. Um, we've got the rapid move, the correction, it's kind of a clearer two wave correction on the ES than this was here this morning. The two wave up, and then it went for that third move, which was stunted, it was about half the size of the previous moves. So. I kind of fully pivoted there. This is when oil saw resistance too. Let me see if I got a better time frame chart or better chart to show you. Let's go down to like a 500 might be a little too small still for the ES. I'll put this up on a uh, thousand. We'll try a thousand here. Um, <laughs> just thinking about it. And close some of this other stuff I got going on in the background here. Well, that's okay for days. All right, so we can see this a little bit better on the thousand tick chart here. But what you get is this more rapid push here 
here's a two wave correction here's the two wave move up and this kind of gains momentum so it kind of did the same thing here on just even a, a smaller scale with the two waves a little bit faster than it went for the third that was stunted and then it did the same thing on a bigger scale here with the two waves up and then the third that ended up stunted by about half now sometimes if the trend placement is good enough if this is like closer to the lower end this can go for a move that's measured compared to here and here and that's kind of what we saw closer on the nasdaq but that's what you got going into the open right now on the nasdaq let's see me word my nasdaq chart hiding in the background There we go. So the pullback here, I put this so that you can see the S&P on top. So I think what you were looking at is you were, I know you were looking at this on the short side here. So you had your first wave pullback here, and then you were looking for a second wave, correct? And got stalled at halfway, right? Yeah. That's, that's a tricky one here because what you're dealing with is you're pulling right back. So this kind of offered a little bit of an early breakout. You can see that here on the inverse head and shoulders on the S&P and it kind of broke early and then pulled back into this congestion there was certainly the potential that that could have pulled back to the lower end though and then widened up with a megaphone you will see that happening in other circumstances so i think that you were looking in a direction that was decent it's just in this case it just didn't have enough momentum on that second pullback to kind of pull this over. And I think a lot of that had to do with what was going on over here. So I think, you know, just this extra little push up here is what kind of kept that from going into um, more of the megaphone version versus going for the slower breakout version. But you will see examples where it will go and have that measured move to the downside. A lot of times it goes a little faster though when it does a megaphone. So instead of getting more of this longer avalanche here, it often will be more of like a one, two, three when it does more of the megaphone and that will bring it down there more easily. So I think that's what you're running into on this one. I do think that you know what you were looking at here with the, the breakdown with the setup, is something that I would have considered doing. I was looking at this at the same time. Of course, I was also trading oil at the same time, so I ended up choosing oil over this, but I was looking at that as well. So when we go into the details on this kind of little bit here, I'm gonna pull up the time frame chart so you can see what was happening here on the time frame chart. This is what that pullback looked like here. So it was actually a pretty um, strong start. And what we've seen in our, um, our classes here this week on the retracements is that when we get that breakout, and it's kind of a little bit slower, kind of a little bit earlier, that pull into the range is a really good zone for it to bounce. Um, if it's a faster breakout, it usually will bounce at the upper end of the range. If it's a slower breakout, it's more likely to try to go to the lower end of the range. So I think here you're also just dealing with the support on that level, and that probably helped keep this in as well. Because if this had pulled back and done like more of a megaphone, you can see it just doesn't look as pretty like that. I mean, we usually like to see the megaphones like more up here. Um, versus like where this would have had this high over here and then tried to do it. So I think that's part of what's going on here too. As far as like advanced trade management on this, 
we come back over here, here's what we're looking at on the smaller time frame. So we've got our two wave move down to start with. Then we've got kind of like this congestion here and a little bit of a faster continuation. So we talked about this yesterday where oftentimes if this pivots fast, it'll start with the slower move and then it'll do the faster second move. So you've got your two waves down, you've got your two wave correction here. And the momentum here though, when this tries to break down, is just not really perfect. So it holds this channel, it does pop back up into the range, and by breaking that lower channel, it confirms that it's not going to do an inverse head and shoulders. But this would have been better if this move up had been slower than this move up, or at least the same momentum. So that was also an issue. And then when this broke here, this is what I would have used as a trailing stop, as like the confirmation. Hey, you know what? This has failed. And technically, we're seeing that failure here when we've got this megaphone where it goes and puts in this um, higher low here that's technically where it's failing. So you could actually even use this pullback here to get out because you've got the stronger shift and then you've got the momentum. So when we talked about our megaphone class, this is one of those examples where um, point four is actually a buy trigger because you've got your double tap here, your retest of the support, and then you've got that break in the channel and then that megaphone. So this point four here is basically a trigger, so it's kind of like that megaphone phoenix. So then the retest in that range just kind of confirms it too. So that's what you've got on the, the bigger scale here. Um, let's go back to our larger time frames though, and we're gonna take a look at our larger outlook here. Yeah, it, it's, it's, you know, I, I saw what you were looking for there, is it was just that bit of the shift, and it was that just the, like the um, the both of those classes kind of put together. And it's hard at the open because things are going so fast too. You've got really fast moves, so a lot of times your brain might not be processing everything as quickly. That's why a lot of times it's even easier. Uh, for traders to trade like some of the the setups on like after hours, you know, like overnight trading, it can be a little bit slower. That first hour or so can be really tricky. It gives you good setups, but it can be slower. It's not actually my favorite time of the day. That's why you'll often find me coming in. I'll, I'll um, kind of trade in like two shifts. So I will... Uh, trade mm, kind of later at night so it's like early like midnight to 3 a.m type of 4 a.m in new york time and then i'll come in you know, kind of after the open and uh trade after that those are kind of like my favorite times right now just because of the time zone that i'm into let's see here i want to add our weekly chart and we will look at gold Richard as well as that oil too. So here's what we've got going on on the weekly chart of the NASDAQ. We've been looking at this potential here where it had the potential for a Momo 2T which means that you've got the first high second high, it doesn't quite go for the third high like a regular momentum reversal. It falls a little bit short and then it will go for like a measured move and then try to reverse. What you're seeing though is it's not really giving us a reversal and it's at a key point where if that pattern is going to happen, it should happen like now. It should happen within the week for sure. We wouldn't want this to push any higher. So, um, that's what we're looking for and, and ideally we would have more momentum shift here in this zone and that would kind of pull this in. So we're really at that do or die point and what's going to happen is that if that can't shift that momentum, you've actually got to go up and start looking at, you know, but the potential that this could go for like a bigger range like that. It's tricky right now because of kind of the we're 
in like, I mean, it almost feels like we are in like a waiting period. And I'm sure a lot of that has to do, you know, not only with what's going on with China, although that people are kind of like, oh, kind of over that right now, but also, you know, the impeachment stuff and how people are going to react to that. So I think that, you know, this is kind of a holding zone in that extra amount of indecision that's kind of been around for the last year, but is really kind of amping up right now. I think that's part of what we've got going on here right now too. So it does make it that it easier. We are seeing a lot of um, intraday swings where we're having just these big surges just on these news releases of even like um, meetings being postponed and stuff. And that's not as normal in history that we would see as much of a reaction. Of course, we didn't see as many postponements and stuff like that either, but it it's just seems like it's more extreme right now, which tells me that there is a lot more indecision. So it's actually confirming that on the monthly timeframes, we are correcting to the uptrend that we've been in for years. It's just making for more volatile action right now. I'm going to show you that monthly chart. So here's our monthly. So we've looked at this a number of times, but what we're seeing here is that we've got that ramp up in momentum. So it makes it easier for these rapid flushes to happen first, but it also means that we have good chances of doing like a bounce. We've talked about this in the trend development classes this week too. In this case, the bounce has been pretty strong, but we're still in a zone of correction. So if we look at like the amount of time it's taken, you know, so far in this corrective phase here, it's really about the same as, you know, these previous zones, but at the same time, it's already had three waves. So there's a greater chance that this can go into a bigger correction that might do that with, you know, going for more of this sharp 2T or something instead of the Momo 2T, which would look like that. But it, it's a zone we wanna be more ca cautious of as far as like longer term investments go. There's not, a, a short strategy yet. It's just at a zone where um, short strategies are more prone to start to try to develop. Let me go and pull up the ES, the S&Ps here on that same time frame. So I'm going to show you the monthly here, and then I'm going to show you the Russell because the Russell's interesting. It's been basing at highs. So here's our ES. We're kind of seeing that, again, that increase in momentum. And even though it did like the megaphone here, not much reaction off of that megaphone level. So you got one, two, three, four, five. There's pivot five. But not a lot of reaction off of it. And usually to get a bigger correction, what we would see is that coming off 0.5, it would come down to about here. And that would give us, you know, a bigger correction, you know, possibly through time, or you know, it could go into like a uh, an avalanche following that, but we just didn't get enough reaction there. So there's definitely still a lot of bulls hanging around in there. Let me go and show you the weekly. Should this be a log scale given the long time because the momentum is really increasing? Um, I have looked at this uh, as inflation adjusted as well. Um, I usually do that a couple of times a year. And we are at major levels of exhaustion on, you know, even going back to like the 19. 1920s, 1930s, and 40s on just depending on the index, but um, because that time frame is so huge, it leaves this zone of resistance to be pretty huge too. So there still can be a lot of move in here. Let me put this on the weekly. We really have to watch what's going on on um, weekly and daily charts at this time because those are the momentum shifts that are going to be most important when you are at this zone like this. So we can see here where it tried to do 
that megaphone. So it started to correct there, and it was actually a pretty you know, nice little move to start with, but it needed to offer more immediate confirmation, and it just couldn't do that. So it's also at that kind of do or die point, like we saw on the NASDAQ, it's a good level of resistance, but there's not much of a shift showing yet on the weekly. I'm gonna put the daily up. So the daily, you can see here, it tried to shift, but look at all those tails. All the tails are on the downside, not the upside. Usually if this is gonna flip over, more of these tails are gonna be on the upside. So it's showing us that even though this shifted momentum and it had a measured move too, so it had that measured move level, we actually saw something like this in um, gold and it actually flipped yesterday. Uh, but it doesn't have that same shift in this congestion because of all these tails you're seeing here. So it's still trying to push a little bit. Normally with this type of pattern, I would still be looking to see if you know this could go and develop into a reversal, but I just don't see it yet. Um, let's go to like a 240. I don't have a 240 yet on here. Okay, we'll look at the 60 instead. I'll put this back a little further. So here you can see where those tails came into play. You got the slower correction, slower correction. It did try to speed up here, but not enough. And then had this little phoenix here, kind of popped it up. So we're still getting in you know, a stronger momentum on the upside. And this could do the similar thing that we saw on the NASDAQ where it has, you know, the three waves and then shifts, or, or two waves rather than then shifts. But these waves are so much stronger. So, I'm not as comfortable saying that that can happen here. And if it does happen, it's it's gonna be more likely that it will be like what we saw in the NASDAQ where it's more of a choppier pullback to start with. Like the NASDAQ and um, the S&P. Let me show you that S&P on the smaller scale again. Let's see, I know I've got another S&P chart open here, yes. So the 3,000. Three thousand tick. Here we go. Yeah, I was gonna see if I could. See. Oh yeah, here it is on the thousand tick. You can kind of see that better there. So see how this is kind of like a more consistent trend. This is deeper. So it's trying to do that same kind of thing. So this could happen here at this point. It just means it's not going to give us like as strong of reversal strategies if that happens. It's going to be more of this choppier move. So it can start off choppy and gain momentum, but we aren't seeing anything other than that type of potential setup right now. Let's see, the Russell, I'm gonna show you just the bigger time frame on the Russell, and then we're gonna go look at some of these other markets. The Russell is kind of interesting. It's been in this base on the daily and weekly charts that's actually a high level base. You can see this here on the daily. Let me kind of clear some of this other stuff I've got on. So you can see that main bigger move. And this looks a lot like what oil is kind of doing, except oil I think had one more pullback here and then um, took off today. I'm gonna to show you that chart. So actually oil would be like here in like a comparable pattern. But it's been in this trading range that overall the range still looks pretty bullish. You know, I, we're good level of resistance, but 
overall, this still looks like a pretty bullish range. I would like another pullback here just because this was slower on the upside than here. But I still think longer term going into next year, it looks way stronger than the than the rest of the market does. So that is something that's kind of holding me back here. I know they don't always have to trade together and a lot of times they don't. In fact, sometimes if um, the NASDAQ and the S&P are rallying really, really strongly and uh, the Russell is just not going anywhere, when the NASDAQ and the S&P stall, the Russell can take off on like a smaller, like you might get like a smaller setup on the NASDAQ and S&P that just won't really go anywhere, but then the Russell will just take off. So that wouldn't surprise me if that happens here. Um, I, da, 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 let me just show you that oil chart so you can see that. Here we go. So you can kind of see this range here. So let me open this. Up. And then we can put this kind of comparison up here a little bit better and see how the two really are looking together. Ah, I gotta move this over. Come on. There you go. So, what you'll notice here is that. You know, it kind of went into like a little bit of megaphone-ish type of move, just like this did here. And then it pulled back and it came back up. So we got like the pullback and the move back up. It kind of shifted momentum in oil, flushed again, and then kind of popped again here. So that's why I think, you know, this could have another pullback you can see kind of three lows here one two three here this did have this like extra flush in the middle too so it could even do two more moves but I would like to see another shift that could pull that back into the lower end of the range again at this point so this kind of oil this morning is actually a really good play this is one of my only trades here today. I'll show you this. I think I posted the megaphone. Here it is. So oil had the pullback. It had the sharper move up. It kind of shifted momentum. Had a two-wave move to the downside and then went to this nice, beautiful textbook megaphone came up here to resistance, but it just kind of kept going with that larger time frame setup. I would like to say that I held that whole thing. I did not. Um, I actually was looking at resistance here on the smaller time frame. It was kind of looking like a 2T. It flushed back, but then it took off. And I don't like to hold oil over the weekend, so I'm more of a day trader on it, but it definitely had the potential to still keep going because this pattern with the two-way pullback and then a megaphone reversal, especially into strong support, often gains momentum. And you'll usually see it at least retake this previous high. And it's a good sound that a lot of people can run into trouble when they're because they'll see like reversal strategies like I did, but they'll trade them and then it will just turn against them and they'll end up with like stop after stop because they're kind of like trying to catch that falling knife. Let me show you. I might have put this in the other. Oh, here's my trade on this. You can kind of see it. So if we had the shift going on here and it had the move up, this was the megaphone there. So had a good pre-market move correction where it came back into support and then did this little baby head and shoulders, inverse head and shoulders, retest, pop back up. I was coming into good resistance here. So this actually got me out of this trade. Let me see if I can show you. Did I put the other image up here? No, it must be in the other channel. Well, maybe I didn't. Oh, here you can see kind of the bigger time frame. So this is what was happening into resistance. You know, it had measured moves. 
it was a good level of resistance, but on the pullback, it shifted again and actually reversed it back again. So this was another entry point to get going again. It actually had the V correction. So this was another entry as well. This basically treats this like a two wave correction, one wave and two waves here. It was just not a clean one, you know, really choppy here. You can see the two wave again in here. This is a harder one to see when it's happening. You'll see it really easily after the fact, but it is harder to see when it's happening because it also has traits of like a 2T. So the thing is, is that when it tries to get the 2T trigger, it just doesn't go. And so that channel break, when it fails to give the 2T and turn around, that channel break actually triggers the long side. And so that will happen at like mid midway points in a trend, just like what we saw here. This was like midway on the way back up. That's when this type of thing happens. So it makes it a harder zone for traders, especially newer traders, but even, I mean, even somebody that's been trading for like 10 years or so, that still tends to be a pretty difficult zone to trade. And as you can see, I didn't catch that re-entry point. I don't know what I was doing at the time, but I didn't even see that until after it was already moving. Even though I was looking for more upside, I still didn't see the two wave. And it was good time correction too. Let's look at um, gold. Let me grab gold chart. I'll show you guys the monthly on gold because I'm still pretty bullish on the monthly chart, but it's at a good level of resistance right now on just the shorter time frames. Actually, let me put um, some Fibonacci levels on here before I post that for you. One second. <laughs> Donna says, you won't beat yourself up for not for missing stuff. Oh my gosh, you guys, I miss so many trades. The main trick is that when you miss something, that you don't go in and just take the next like setup that is not nearly as good. You know, you like beat yourself up that you miss something that you just take the next thing, no matter what it looks like, you know. That's a huge risk. So if you miss it, just wait wait until you see something again and if you miss that one wait again you're gonna start getting them even if it means hey you might have to go back down to micros or go to sim trading so that you can get your trigger finger back up to speed but um, just don't beat yourself up if you miss something especially if it if you go back watch something unfold like bar by bar and then you'll see why you missed it but you'll also start to see the things that show you hey that reason that I missed it you know that would have led to another setup will actually give you an idea of when it's going to go the other way too so like in the case of something like it's coming down you're at a midway move and it looks like a two T that's going to go lower, but it can't gain speed and just kind of goes like this, so that you know this pullback and then this pullback end up being very comparable. That can actually give you that buy, even though it looked like a 2T to start with. And that usually happens, like I said, at that midway point. So if you go back and watch this unfold bar by bar from the 2T point, 
you'll start to see where it lacks that confirmation on the momentum. And two Ts, generally speaking, unless it's like a, real, a steep one like we've talked about, they will generally pick up momentum. If it's at a midway point, it's gonna pull back down. It's gonna show momentum pretty quickly. Kind of can tell if it goes out like, you know, however long this is, if it goes out that long and it still hasn't gone, you wanna start using a channel break as an exit and even a possible reversal instead of holding on for a stop. So that is something you're gonna go wanna wanna go back, replay that in the video here so that that makes sense. So here's gold. I kinda had a like really long phoenix, but it's the inverse head and shoulders. So gaining momentum here. So this still has potential to bring this back up to the upper end of the strange just because of this bowl-like formation that it's forming here. We can always see examples where, you know, it just kind of chops back and just doesn't end up confirming. It just kind of keeps chopping and chopping and chopping. That happens, but so far there's not um, enough of a pullback for me to be worried about that. Usually if it pulls back more than about, well, I like it to hold in like the upper 236 to 38.2% of this move. Um, to get that stronger continuation, it will usually hold in that upper level. If it pulls back to about 50%, then kind of get more concerned that it might not um, end up uh, playing out. So buy setups, more likely it could go into a range or it could go into something like a, a shallow avalanche, which would mean, you know, here's your upside move that I just drew, comes back like, that and then it might just like go like that and then end up dropping so that it can form more of like a shallow avalanche on a larger time frame. So right now we don't have that, um, but it is something you want to watch for with the momentum on the smaller time frame. So let me go and show you the weekly on this and then the monthly, or not the monthly, the uh, daily. We actually have seen kind of shallow avalanche action on the weekly, just with that slower start. So it's it's like what we talked about, where you get that really rapid move into the high, right? And it doesn't shift momentum enough. This has a little bit of a momentum shift, but it's not enough. So it pulls back and it's just kind of like choppier. And this risks gaining momentum when this happens. So this is, really not like an ideal initial correction that's gonna you know, keep the momentum going. We have to kind of watch this level here. We want it to hold the zone of these previous highs in order to get that to keep that uptrend going. So it can go into a longer range and keep going, um, but it's just not quite confirming yet. And really, you know, the best thing would have been if this had been like a pull, full you know, measured move kind of went into a correction like that and then continued because what that would do is that this is your first one, then you've got your second, that's a one, two, three, and then it could go for the third. So this kind of maybe blew off a little bit too fast and too harsh. So it might attract too many people because it just had such a straight upside surge. If it had been a little bit slower like that, then it would have a greater chance of doing an even stronger move with just that shorter correction, kind of gain that momentum to bring like that parabolic move like we saw in oil here this morning. Let's grab the daily and then we'll go look at some other markets. So I'll show you that shallow avalanche on the daily. And this is kind of where the concern as far as the bulls come into play. So this pullback here, 
and then this shift here, and we've been talking about this here for a while, it triggers that a shallow avalanche, but it only goes with the one to one ratio. So this could go out to a two to one ratio. So pull back and then go faster again. So that potential is still there. So like I said, this ideally would have been a little bit faster here. It would not have stalled as much and rounded off as much. It would have kind of kept that pace up, then gone and then continued more easily, but it's just not, it's kind of rounding off a bit more. So as far as the bullish side of things goes, that kind of concerns me. And I have longer term investments in gold, but what I've been doing is trading some of the shorter term on the short side, um, just using the futures market instead of uh, the other vehicles I usually use, like GLD, like Richard was talking about or asking about. Um, let's see. I'm just looking through you guys' questions here quick. I think I've covered most of those so far. Let's look at um, some individual stocks. So what do you guys have that you want me to take a look at on the stock side of things? Here's Shockley. No, <laughs> Shake and Shack. I got it down, man. I, I'm not calling it Shockley anymore. Shake and Shack. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, this is really like we were expecting. It struggled, you know. I It had room that it could have popped up, but we're just not getting that coming back up. So had that blow off top and, you know, that kind of high can hold more easily when we're looking at trades like this. So, like, you know, short term we can get the bounces, but really this is something it's more likely, even though it started off slowly, what we will usually see is um, at some point this can get like that kind of rapid, crazy bounce, and then it will sell off again. It's kind of like opposite of what we see at highs. So still kind of expecting that to keep pretty weak. Let's look at SAP for Donna. There's your megaphone on the monthly. It's kind of doing like what's going on in the overall market here where it sort of like gains momentum and then did the megaphone like the indices did. And just with that increase, I'm not seeing a reversal strategy yet. Could easily just kind of hang out here, but it, it, it's higher risk for a new setup here. It's kind of like, mm, I don't see a reason to kind of bail on it, but at the same time, don't see a reason to buy it either. On a weekly, let's see if you know details look any different. Um, so it's a tricky one. I it's still holding up. I think that this could still go for new highs. We do like something like that and kind of shift it and still pull up, still manage to pull up here. You can see that this had the pullback off the megaphone, but it only pulled back about 50%. And usually if it's going to go further, we would see a better continuation move and usually would you know, have some greater strength down into this zone and then come into there. So this looks like it wants to keep going higher. It doesn't look like we've got a reversal coming in play, despite um, kind of wave count there on that bigger time frame. But yeah, it still looks stronger. Sure, we're at some resistance of the previous highs, but still think it can push through that. You are welcome. Apple, trying to go for that 2T. We've been talking about this for a little while. We were talking about this all the way back here on this potential because it pulled back up to this previous high zone. So what that meant was it had a greater chance 
that because this had a nice deep V here, it had a greater chance that it could still go and do a move like that. It's measured. We're kind of right into um, the template or the like hypothesized trading route that I drew, you know, months ago. So we are at that zone where generally I would expect this to kind of stall here. But let's look at the monthly. Steep, really steep move. So again, these to turn around, they would be choppier like over here. They don't generally just like pivot and turn. If it does pivot harsh, then it usually bounces back up to do a retest. Um, things like a smaller 2T at that level would be a lower risk setup than trying to do anything like on the short side here because it's more likely that it could do like a little rapid pull but then go back up so you can see that kind of happening over here but if this does do like a V holds that high usually it would start out slower and this kind of setup does risk that when it comes down has kind of a, a correction like this that it might do another bounce so it could do like a smaller 2t there on the monthly time frame and still manage to go for a higher high. So this is a higher risk zone to do any new trades here. I would go down to much smaller time frame than a weekly for setups at this point. At some point we might see a bigger setup develop on the weekly, like it might go and form like a shallow avalanche, for example, or it could do that pullback, like I said, you know, be, it might even do like a shallow avalanche, then go for a 2T and then drop. Those would be strategies that I would watch for on the weekly time frame now on Apple. But it's gonna take some time for that to play out, a couple weeks at least. So in the meantime, I would stick to mostly intraday charts. I'd say it would be your best bet. Daily time frame, I don't even know that you're gonna see like a great daily time frame setups right now because this is a zone where you can see the shift happening here on the daily chart. So it could flush really fast just like it did here and what often happens, you don't even get a two-way flush sometimes. We saw that back in here, only did like a one-way pullback. That can repeat again and still go to that slightly higher high and try to shift the momentum on a bigger time frame. So we'll start to get more of that kind of whippiness back and forth as um, kind of indecision sets in. That's usually what we would see here at this type of level. But there's many ways that that indecision can try to play out. So it comes down to um, this is where you know often we have a lot more possibilities as far as what patterns could form and as each wave of momentum plays out it narrows the field of what we'll see as the bigger time frame play out on Nvidia Probably not going to look at um, 4x here today. NVIDIA, really good at that measured move here. This might do again like a smaller 2T. You can see it's kind of trying to shift on this daily chart. Uh, this weekly makes me nervous on the bear side though. So if this was. If this had already had like um, a slower two wave move and then this was a two wave up and then it had this pattern forming in that second portion, I'd be all for major shorting at this point. But it's kind of because of how it's formed here, it's kind of like gaining speed. So that makes this slower and the stronger. This is one of those situations where sometimes that can actually go and keep going. So I know we've talked about this measured move here and you know that kind of bigger level there and this being the two ways up, but it's almost gone too far on holding up for that to really do a strong break. This point in time, I would be most inclined to expect this to try to come back up to this zone. 
just because of the way this is shifting. Like I said, this pattern alone, if I saw this at a resistance level, I would be looking for major shorts. You know, I might be looking for like a, a smaller retest or like a flush in a retest or 2T, but I'd be looking for majorly for the short side with this. But since it is overall showing smaller strength moves and it's kind of gone past the point where we would see that measured move that it could pull down and break through that low and it has this stronger drop it tells me it's holding up pretty well here so given what we're seeing right now that's what I would expect I wish I could think of a recent example that um, shows this Go back and look for things that have like a major impulse move off the high and still make it back up to that impulse move size. And you'll see that kind of shifting momentum happening. So that can kind of help give you a little bit of a guide. So in here, it's more common. We see like um, what will look like it might be trying to do a momentum reversal or something like that. And it actually shifts and comes back up. So actually, just like what we saw happening with oil, kind of, that kind of thing would be pretty typical. So if you go and look again back at what we saw with oil this morning, that point where I got out, you know, like it had that momentum shift, um, and then it had the correction, and then it took off, that's like the point that I got out on oil, and it did a correction, and then it kept going. So that is, I think, a, a really good um, one to compare this to. Yeah, these tilted phoenixes are the hardest. It's easiest when it's also like down at the lower end of a channel. You know, it's kind of just going like here. Like this is an easier one because you have one wave up and then you've got your two-wave correction and it's kind of an easier, hey, that's a buy, but when it's over here and kind of a midway point, that continuation can be more difficult. But I do think in this case, the odds are favoring the upside. I would say, you know, 85, 90% chance that it's going to go higher versus making it before it goes down to here. So if I was going to bet on the side, that's the side I'm betting on. We're looking at like, you know, where's this going to be in four months? Uh, Walmart. Also showing that to T move here, but this is on the weekly time frame. So here's that previous high. It looks a lot like Apple, right? Got your correction zone, you got your second move up, and this looks pretty exhausted here, but let's look at the monthly. Hmm. So yeah, I mean, monthly could easily pull back down in here, but again, probably more of a slower move because this on this larger monthly time frame is pretty steep. So it would have the risk of being like a slower choppier start that could pull back in that might actually create a tilted move that could go back up again but I would expect this to try to pull back into at least this congestion here just more likely to be slower start so you know might start to see some smaller time frame short patterns but it could get like not could be like a lot more overlap because this is again really steep momentum. When the momentum is like noticeably shifting and you know here, then you're more likely to get that stronger move. But this has like a really sharp move. So even though this is like shifting momentum, it had like a fake break. So see how it kind of starts a little slower, more overlap and then gains momentum. That's more likely in this situation here too. Did I miss anybody? 
AXP. Hmm. Again, you know, it gains momentum. Not really seeing a short yet, although it's pretty extended. Here's a good example of a tilted phoenix, by the way. You get the bounce up, and then it kind of shifts this momentum, and then it goes for the measured move. So that's a, a pretty typical tilted phoenix. And then this is kind of that same type of correction that I was just talking about as potential in Walmart. This is a monthly time frame. So that level is your measured move that you're looking for. So this could still be midway chop that this can still manage to pull higher on the monthly time frame. Let's go down smaller. Yeah, there's there's still room on here too. So it's kind of treating this like the correction. And this might pull back here but and go, but it's not looking like a turnover. What I would want to watch for on the risk on the downside, what would worry me for the bullish side of things is it does this. It goes and goes into like choppiness like that because that can flush back down and come back into this zone pretty quickly, just like what we saw happening on gold. Uh, let me show you that gold chart again so you can see that comparison. <laughs> Actually, see, look, it's like drawn perfectly, right? <laughs> so it almost lines up with exactly what I was saying there on that AXP. So that would be the main thing that would be risky for me, but it would mean a lot of chop before it got there. I wouldn't generally expect this to, you know, flush really quickly because if it did try to flush here, it would tend to bounce back up and go higher. So usually if this is holding this zone and this like tried to break this low here, this would usually bounce back up and go to a higher high. So it would hold this zone of support. So if you're like long-term invested in that, I wouldn't even be worried if it went to a lower low there. The main concern would be if it kind of chopped around here and couldn't get going fast enough. And then that could break. LRCX. We got a pretty much blow off top here. So these, again, they can kind of creep to slightly higher highs. It's very difficult to sustain this kind of momentum past this. So this is a zone where here's our two wave up. In another circumstance, this would be like a 2T, but the momentum is too strong to get that to turn around really easily. Usually if this flushed down, it would try to pop back up and do a retest. It could even go for like a 2T at that point. So I'd look for momentum to start to shift here, but not necessarily a strong reaction for the reversal. So this can still play around here before it tries to do a bigger correction. I wouldn't expect any sharp rapid turnaround on this LRCX. We are at resistance. Yes, it is exhausted, it is extended, but you can still see it, you know, sometimes it can still creep up, you know, 20, 30 more points pretty easily. So watch the smaller time frames for things like a shallow avalanche, um, like what we saw in gold, because that's what can turn that around. Here's an example, kind of a, what a shallow avalanche can look like, but we don't have anything yet for that. Uh, Disney, megaphone on Disney. So we've got resistance here. Mm. Monthly is iffy. So what we have is like a pretty short correction compared to our upside move. I mean, the last portion is really, you know, pretty close to one to one, not even one to one. So sometimes these can pop, pull back into this range and try to go again. This has that kind of risk to it. 
I wouldn't generally expect this to be something that would turn around I, um, easily and like reverse the trend. It'd be something if you're in a long-term hold on this, you're looking for you know multiple years, I would still keep holding this. So yeah, we're at resistance short-term just because we're at the upper end of that megaphone, but it really only had one strong breakaway move. So sometimes this megaphone it can do kind of a little bit of chop here just like we saw with some of the other megaphones and then still break out and keep going higher. So I wouldn't be concerned too much on this for longer term downside yet. Short term, let's see. And short term it still is another, again, like it can pull back here and kind of pop back up there and still not really turn around. Again, things that try to turn around with a sharp move like this and pivot like that, they'll tend to have lots of overlap. So it'd be choppy, which also makes it easier to have a more rapid move back to the upside again, like you can see here. If it shifts the momentum, then sells off more strongly, that's where it can go lower. And that's like what we saw with the NASDAQ this morning. Um, you can see that this wave was stunted compared to this move, just like what um, Harvey saw with his short side on the NASDAQ this morning. Except this one had like a more obvious shift in momentum. And then there was that Phoenix. So I told Harvey, you know, if with advanced trade management, that would have gotten you out of the trade and even potentially turned you around. So if you go back right to like those first 10 minutes of our session today and review that, that's what we had happening right here. Um, let me kind of, sh I can show you that chart. So you can also see that comparison. Grab my, where'd my NASDAQ chart go? Here we go. So here, so it's like this is your pullback, your correction, then the shift, then the phoenix. I know the time frame is like way too small here. But then you can see how that popped. That's like really similar. So it's the same pattern. Let me, you might see it better on a little bit bigger time frame. So it was like a 500, 600 open. Nope. All right, we'll make this like a 500. You can see it a little bit better. Right underneath it. So kind of lined up there. And that kind of is on the smaller time frame, but it also did it here on the bigger. That might actually be a bit more of a better comparison. So obviously, you know, things can shift momentum a little bit. This is stronger up. So even though this gave a nice second wave up, this does the same thing. It might pull back a little bit more and do a slower move the second time around. But I wouldn't be worried again, longer term hold on this. All right, you guys, so I think, oh, I missed Tesla. Did I get it, everybody else? CGC, I did not cover CGC. E. <laughs> this is kind of one of those where, you know, again, it pulls down kind of like sh Shake Shack and it can pop, but then go back up like this and then maybe if something happens it might you know go and regain strength again weight watchers is a good one to give that comparison to what happened to weight watchers here i haven't been trading this for a while <laughs> ww there we go. 
<laughs> look at how close that was. Like the, the two pivot highs and came down, it had those pops and then it kind of came back up. So CGC, there's those two highs. So it's kind of like, this would be like the play out. Oh, thank you, Karen. I haven't pulled up Weight Watchers in a long time. Usually I'm good at remembering symbols with the names, but kind of messing up sometimes more here now. I've been trading more futures lately, I think the last year or so. Stocks I traded a ton when I was on East Coast time, but with the my schedule changes, it's made it easier to trade futures. The nice thing about like learning technical analysis though is that you know when you change um they thought if it changed the symbol it would help no luck <laughs> but um the nice thing about like learning technical analysis like how i teach you guys is that if you change markets everything's the same you know you can put it on a different time frame you're still looking for the same things look at totally different markets still looking at the same things doesn't matter See, I wasn't crazy, right? It was WTW, right? <laughs> then they changed it to WW. When did they do that? Obviously, it was a long time ago. It shows you how long I've been not trading Weight Watchers. I know it was WDW. See, I wasn't totally senile. <laughs> Tesla here is one where what we had was kind of the earlier sort of breakout, had that inverse head and shoulders. You know, if we were looking at oil, this would have had like that extra kind of bump and we would be right about here. So we're on the equivalent of the current rise on oil on the daily, except that this broke there instead. So it did that pull back into the range. I didn't think Tesla would be able to do this um, just with everything that was going on with it, but I gotta say, it's making a pretty good comeback. And the way that it's managed to hold this up this momentum off the lower end of that range, again, it goes back to what we've talked about with that lower range. Let me show you that oil comparison. Here's even the kind of the pullback I showed you earlier but it is holding up pretty darn good. Let's see here. Oil chart. Here you go. So, hmm, really want to make it that big. See, so it's gonna let me put, oh, I'll put it over here. So if we kind of look at this as like the start here, then where this bounced back up in the middle, I know it's kind of hard to see this as small, you guys, I'm sorry, but I can't open it this much bigger and lose everything. I wish TradeStation had like standalone charts. Maybe it does on a newer version and I just don't know it yet, but this now, is at the time development where this is a one wave correction, this is a two wave correction. So one wave, two wave. So, you know, it, it could go, it could still manage and actually break higher. It's a little bit faster on the downside here. That's what threw me off. The fact that it got me, that it, it gained that momentum on the downside. And a lot of times when this does that two wave and treats it more like a two wave move, it doesn't have as much of that rapid flush. It does happen, but just not as much. So I don't know, you guys, I don't know what I would do with Tesla here. I think what we're gonna end up seeing is that this will have a correction here. They'll go, this will be the bigger one. They'll try to do a break here, but then struggle. 
oil um, did this on a smaller time frame too. It has an electric truck unveiling next week. Hmm. Yeah. So I think a pullback, we would have a pretty decent swing trade coming out on that. Where's that? Time frame. Oil on Wednesday. All right, I'm gonna grab that chart. So I'm gonna show you how this kind of had the same like action within the range and then it managed to do that push. So this is gonna look really similar to what we're seeing here. So hopefully you'll see it okay. Whoops. All right, leave that there. Go all the way down. So see how this had a pop, kind of shifted, steep momentum back up to the upper end of the range. But this was reversed. You know, this had stronger and then kind of slower. So this is kind of slower and then stronger. But this portion and the fact that it's both within this bigger range here, that stronger move will usually pull that back up and give you a third move. In this case, it even went further. So that could do the same thing, but I would say that this would be a good one to watch for four swing trades here within you know the next couple months or so. Ideally, the correction would be about the same as here. Um, that would be the best. That's going to give you the smoothest upside tra trade where you can hold it for, well, I mean, this case, it would be a couple months. So it'd be kind of halfway between swing trade, position trade, because you are looking at like a little bit of a larger time frame here. But I definitely, that's what I would really look for here on Tesla. I think that we're going to get that extra pop back up there. You are very welcome. Jesse, I will do your TSM and then we'll wrap up. I know I'm going way over here. Uh, semiconductors. It's that extreme move, you guys. I mean, sometimes we see this pull back into the range and then take off again, but it's usually more of a choppy pullback. It is exhausted. I wouldn't look for a whole lot more here. If it tries to go higher, it's gonna be doing it just on intraday setups. See this little flush? This is what we were talking about earlier where you can get these flushes, but it is at a point where that momentum should start to shift. So I wouldn't be looking for too much here. At this point, you know, later on, you might get a shallow avalanche again, you know, it could go like that and do a setup, or you might get a 2T, but right now is a very high risk zone for a new trade. And if I was long on the long side of this, I'd be protecting a lot of position. All right, you guys, I'll get this saved, get this up on YouTube for you. And uh, I'm out of here. So have a wonderful weekend, you guys. Um, had a couple questions on the ebook. Let me grab a link for you. It's just tonyhanson.com backslash ebook. So it's kind of an updated version of the book I put out years ago. Let me grab that link. So there you go. Hopefully that answers your question on that one. I had mentioned it in League of Traders here this week too, so give it a repost for those of you asking. You're welcome. Yep. It's just tonyance.com backslash ebook and you'll get the download for that. So I'll leave this up here and stop our recording and I will see you guys next week.